heal the world, make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here, and today, in this video, I'm going to share with you how I stake my baby tomato seedlings. I'm also going to finish uh, amending the soil in my greenhouse, as well as plant in that bed that I didn't finish the other day, and I'm also going to stake the tomatoes in my greenhouse. And I'm going to show you some trees that are coming out of dormancy that I didn't show you before. Okay? All right. Let's get started. Okay, guys, I'm in the greenhouse. It's a little windy outside. And I'm going to work on this raised garden bed all along here. The first thing I'm going to do is open up a um, bag of black cow manure and and then I'm going to distribute it throughout the bed and then I'm going to add azomite rock dust and worm castings and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I else I'm doing okay guys I added the cow manure and I've added it to this whole bed this bed is about uh, a foot in some areas uh, because the uh, ground is not even, um, it might be two feet or 18 inches. It's a little smaller down on that end, but it's okay. But I went in the house and you see that little blue picture? And I filled it up with azomite rock dust and worm castings. And I only had a little garden line. I thought I had another bag, but I couldn't find it. But I'll find it later on, okay? And I'm going to put another brick right there. And another brick right there, probably standing them up vertical so that it could fit into that tight space. And uh, I decided that I'm going to plant my two pepper plants that I topped off in my weekly Monday night live chat. I'm going to put these three marigolds in the ground. And the okra is beat up pretty bad, you know, from that storm when I accidentally left them outside. Well, let me be honest, it wasn't an accident. When I thought about it, I didn't think the rain was gonna be that bad, so I left them out. I planted some of them in my tea garden, and I'm gonna plant these. So if they make it, they make it. If they don't, they don't. And I'm going to put the peppers right here with a marigold in between it. And I was watching something I don't know. Oh, I know what it was. It was the um, it was the seminar that they had at the Dallas uh, Library of Zoom meeting, and they suggested planting uh, peppers with your okra because you know the okra is going to grow up real tall, and it takes a while for the peppers to take off. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So I'll probably put an ochre right up here. And this this um, cover right here is coming off. So I'm going to make sure that I don't put the ochre anywhere where it'll come in contact with the frame. So I'll probably put two ochres right here. And then one pepper and one marigold. Two ochres in the middle of that frame right there. That space. Two okras and a pepper plant and a marigold. And then as my seedlings continue to grow, I'll just keep adding, oh, uh, pardon me, I'll just keep adding um, peppers down the row. Because I have like about six uh, that I need to pot up. They're only about an inch tall. But we've got the whole summer. Okay? So I'll come back. I don't need to show you how I plant them because I've done that in all my videos with my transplanting this spring so you can go back and look at one of those but it's really easy oh i know what i was going to tell you i found let me walk over here be careful because it's muddy i found two tomato plants that i didn't think were going to make it but 
they looking like they may survive and they are mortgage lifters. So I pulled all the leaves off of them and I'm gonna put one here and we're just gonna see. It's something that I would have put in the compost. We're just gonna see if, it, if they're gonna make it and I'll put one here, okay? I'll come back when everything is planted. Okay, I thought I would stop and let you see the pattern. So right there is the okra. Over here, uh, about almost two feet away from it is another okra. All the little plants that you see that look like this, look like green onions, they are actually society garlic. And then I divided one of these um, marigold plants because it had more than one seedling in it. I think it'll be okay. And in between the two okra plants, I put one pepper plant, a marigold, and a marigold. And now I'm gonna put two pepper plants right here in this space and put a pepper plant in the middle and some marigolds. I'll be back, okay? Okay, family, all I have to do is water everything in. And I'll do that right now. And you see my fan there. If you're wondering, do I leave it on all day and all night? Yes. If a thunderstorm is supposed to happen, I'll unplug it. But I want these plants to be tough so that next month, when the cover comes off, they will be used to our high winds. The only thing that I did differently than what I told you I was going to do was I put this Japanese sorrel here. It's a form of a hibiscus, it's an annual. It looked really bad, it got beat up, as you can see. Let me go closer. Got beat up in the last storm, and so did this sweet basil, but I'm planting them anyway. I plan to broadcast some miracle seeds in the openings of the blocks. Okay, so that's it for now. I'm moving on to the next project. Here's a before picture of my side yard. And in my previous video, I shared with you how I made the hugel culture. Now I'm going to show you what I've been doing with it. So, Facebook group, we had another rainy night of storms. But this time, I put little five-gallon pots with a brick on top to protect the Texas Star hibiscus that I'm going to grow in this tea garden. Yeah, I decided I'm going to make this a tea garden. Mm-hmm but I'm not gonna put any mint in it because it is so invasive and that's what happened to my last tea garden. I don't consider it a mistake because it, you know, it's very useful. Um, and it was in a raised bed, but this one I'm not gonna put any mint in. And I'm not gonna put anything that's invasive. So I wanted to share that with you. These are looking pretty good. And the reason why I planted these here, because the last time we had a lot of rain, um, this one turns color when it, cause it got a little too cold in the greenhouse. And when we had a lot of rain the last time, um, it beat up the leaves. So I didn't want that to happen. Okay. So I'm glad I, I thoroughly watered this but I'm glad the rain really soaked in really well in this hookah culture, except for right here where I had the plants covered with the five gallon buckets. So I'll be taking you guys along every step of the way and show you what I'm gonna plant in my tea garden. I know right off the top of my head that I'm gonna have low to the ground plants growing in the border and the ones that eventually are going to get real tall I'm going to plant them for my thriller at the top but it'll be several years that for it to get real big real tall I should say so I'm going to plant a couple more on this side I probably dedicate this garden to my mother because I know my mom loved tea she especially loved ginger and chamomile so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to 
figure it out what I'm going to cut. I got to go to look through my seeds again. But it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll probably put marigolds around the border. The French marigolds. And more soil is going to go in here too. Because now that the rain has compressed the soil, I see where I can put a couple bags of new potting soil on the top. Okay. I hope you all have a wonderful gardening day. And by the way, let me show you this chair right here. It reminds me of my grandmother. I bought it from an antique store mm, before I retired. So it's probably about eight years old. I have another one. And I think I'm going to put it right here so I can come out here and meditate in the morning and have my tea and listen to some gospel music. And so I'll move that chair out of the way because I don't need it if I have this one right here. And those of you that are really good with uh, trees, fruit trees, what do you think about this branch right here? Let me move the chair back. How it just, this is, this is not a uh, grafted tree. It's a wild mulberry. It's supposed to be native to Texas. And any branch that you see bent is what I'm going to come back and prune, like right there. Uh... I'm wondering, do I need this whole big piece right here? And could I graft that? I probably could. Or maybe I can root it and give it to my daughter. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to cut it off right there at the bottom, right there. And then I'm going to cut it maybe about right here. And this could be a whole new tree for my daughter. Tell me what you think by the end of the day because I'm going to do it tomorrow. Okay? All right. So, as you can see, I've been really picking up the uh, debris, just doing my typical spring cleaning. And I just want to remind you of the before picture. These chairs were originally white, and they were rusted, and I primed them and sanded them down and painted them gold. Because they stay out here all year, and you can see it's getting rusted. So, I'll make a video and show you. Um, how I'm going to transform these um, chairs again. Okay, I started working on the tea garden. And anywhere where you see little sticks sticking up, I'm going to prune them off because they were obstructing the area that I planted. And I wanted to allow plenty of room for the roots to grow. So let me share with you what I planted. I planted Japanese hibiscus. Some people call it soro. I put one over there, one right here, and one over there. And then I planted uh, two of, um, did I plant two? Yeah, two of the Texas Star Hibiscus, the red ones, one here, one here. And actually, that one may be white because the label had uh, faded. And then on the end, that is my Aunt Lois cold hardy hibiscus she lives in gary lived in gary indiana so i know that it can stay survive over the winter and there's another unlawless hibiscus there and i might just do a big scoop up put them in pots put them in the greenhouse the first year now you probably recognize okra here okra there okra there okra there okra there the reason why i put okra in here is because i do drink okra water it prevents or helps with diabetes. My mother passed of complications of diabetes, and I had a brother that passed from complication about diabetes. And my doctor says I'm pre-diabetic, but my numbers are down low. 6.3, 7.0, you're diabetic. So I'm drinking a lot of okra water. So I also planted those there for another reason. Two birds with one stone I'm, I'm going to kill. One, for health benefits. Two, they will grow real tall and shade out the young seedlings, the young plants, okay? I planted a couple of heirloom zinnias. One, two, three, four, I think. And a couple of, uh, uh, they got a little cold, uh, you know, when we had to freeze. Uh, what do you call those? Marigolds? One here. That'll trap white flies and keep some insects away. And I'm going to be planting more, but I just stopped here so that I can remember to put the uh, permanent marker on those labels. And the ones that I recognize, I don't have to do that. But I want to distinguish between the white and the red hibiscus and my aunt's hibiscus. Okay, I'll come back. All right, show you more that I've done later. And this is Thursday morning after a really, really good rain. 
I pruned my brown turkey fig tree today, and I think I'm going to prune a few more branches uh, for two reasons. One, I trimmed off a lot of dead uh, branches. I scraped the bark back, and I cut off anything that wasn't showing any signs of green, which is indicative of signs of life. And another reason why I wanted to prune it real heavily, I'm going to take those cross branches out, is because every year I get a fungus during our rainy period. And you can see there some of the dead branches. And then I'm going to show you my other uh, tur brown turkey fig. It's a little more damaged, and I'll show you how I pruned it as well. Here is the other brown turkey fig tree. And I think I'm going to have to prune more of it off uh, because it's not showing signs of life. But um, as you can see right there, I'm going to scrape back a little bit. You see a little green there? And I did that all over it, and I just cut what I thought I needed to cut off. And uh, scrape a little bit here. not showing any life there but anyway that's okay if I have to cut it all the way down that's what I'll do because last year it didn't get as cold as it has this year and it I had to cut it down all the way to here but it all grew back up real tall okay so I'll let you guys know in future videos how it's doing hey everybody it's Saturday morning my uh, grandson Brian is here you want to speak hello Okay, so we are going to show you how we wire the cages together to keep them uh, more stable in high winds. And this is Brian's flower here. Mm -hmm. And did you notice you got another flower on it, Brian? Mm -hmm. It's blooming. You're going to have a red one here. Uh oh, there we go. And it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger. Okay? So. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna take this wire, and let's go back out. We're gonna take this wire here, and we're gonna wire these two together. Okay, so you're gonna just take your tie and just twist. And that gives it a little bit tighter. See, that one right there is too loose. Okay, so connect them with a double wire, and then twist. That's all you have to do. A little tighter. Boy, that mask is still on off of your nose, but there's no COVID out here, but we just have masks sometimes for allergies. Make it tighter. I'm trying. Okay, let's see what you got. Good job. Okay, so I'm putting the wire, connecting the two, and then I just twist. It's not hard, okay? I guarantee you that will stay. Hey, everybody. Gonna... Brian is putting some straw in the walkway uh, to let, you know, dry up. It's, it's too muddy, and I don't want anybody to fall in here, especially me or my sweet grandbabies. And so he's just putting some straw down. And uh, go ahead, babe. You can take more than that at, at a time, Brian. Take two hands of straw. And if you don't put the mask over your nose, you still gonna have allergies. Okay, go ahead. And I have one bag of leaves left to shred. Sorry. That's okay. To shred and uh, mulch the uh, two garden beds in here. Put a lot down there where all that mud is. Just keep putting it down, sweetie. And that uh, got a table back there will uh, go down. I'll spray it with neem oil, bring it back into the grow room. And then we're going to set up uh, those two horses back there. Okay, that's enough, baby. Get, get where the mud is. It's more mud down there, Brian. I'm filling up the whole pile of 
Yeah, I know, but you wasted my straw. This, this could be enough for next year. I'm going to edit that out. Get you two more handfuls, and that's it. To put right there in the middle. Here, get two more handfuls, and that's it. Okay, that's enough, Brian. Put it where the most of the mud was, and you know where it is. Come here, right over here. Right over here, Brian. Come to, toward me. Right there. Right there. All down there. With the straw. Get your foot. Some behind your foot. Uh, no, no, no. Go behind you. Go behind you. Right there. See, look. Yes. Thank you, Brian. Now, that will absorb some of that mud, and we'll, it'll dry it out, and then we'll be able to take the leaf blower. Is it mud down there? Okay, just get a little bit for that, okay? Because I want to mulch my strawberries with that next year. Okay, that's cool. I know, go ahead, go ahead. We don't hurt and get this off the video. Now, while you're down there, pick up all the cups off the floor, up under that table. They dropped when you were putting those two empty grow boxes up there. Okay, so I'm gonna cut stop Guys, the video. What did you find under the table, Ryan? I found um, a marigold plant. Marigold plant, probably the wind or whatever made it fall. I don't know how long it's been behind there, but it's still growing, it's getting ready to flower. So I made a little hole right down here. Brian's gonna put it here. Push it down. And, uh, that's enough, that's enough. Now put dirt all around it. Then you're gonna have to go get some water. How about you just go get your, some from your water Wait, bottle? This is mud. I know, but it's not enough, Brian. Okay. Go get you some water in your water bottle and just water this so we can move on okay? okay so i can show them all the other nice things you'd help me do so while brian's going to get some water i want you to know we didn't get a chance to put more soil in here and 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 uh plant some seeds so i'll do that um uh, because i'm getting exhausted i did a lot this week and I need to just go ahead on the rest of the rest of the day. But I'm going to show you the other things that Brian helped me with. But all up and down here, we're going to put some uh, marigold seeds. Okay, that's enough, son. You don't want it too, too wet. You can put the rest of the water here. Brian, what did I just say? I said you can put the rest of the water here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you remember to go around in a circle. Good job. There are a few things I want to show you. I want to show you all of these empty containers. I had over 200 red solo cups, and this is all I have left, and about four or five sunflowers. Everything else I got into pots already. And these are, there's one little zinnia that was beat up in the storm, and uh, these are morning glories. Some of them will make it, some of them will not, but hey. It's okay. I didn't buy anything this year. Everything was grown from seeds. Hey guys, right here in this walkway, it was real muddy, so Brian helped me uh, pull up weeds, and he did a good job of uh, helping me put the uh, cardboard boxes down, and then we're gonna put the wood chips on top of the cardboard boxes, right, Brian? Yes. Okay, I see you dancing, but once again, your nose is not covered. Your allergies are still gonna act up if you don't cover up your nose. And over here, anywhere where it was muddy, I planted a lot into this uh, hoover culture. I'm going to cut off. I was going to let Brian do it, but I'm calling it a day. And, and I'll do the rest of this tomorrow. I'll prune off the little sticks that's sticking up. And then I'm going to put some border plants all the way around in a circle. Um, yeah, but I think I already told you earlier in the video what else I planted. Uh, this is compost. This is compost. Uh, but it's, it's looking good. It just takes more time than I thought. And Brian, if you'll help me, we'll put these bags into the compost. Okay, Brian. You're gonna empty it, son. You're gonna empty it, son. You're gonna have to turn it upside down, right? Turn it upside down. And then take the cover off. Yeah. And then we're gonna shovel some, shovel some of the soil right here where we grew sweet potatoes in last year. Okay. You wanna hold it while I shovel? Yes. Okay. No, uh, you wanna shovel? Yes. Okay, go ahead. 
this will this will speed up the action of the compost. But we won't use it for another year. Don't drop the don't drop the soil on the ground. We're just gonna grow in um uh three of three of those uh 17 gallon buckets. Those had the biggest sweet potatoes, you remember? Yeah. They were bigger in those buckets like that as opposed to as this I remember, tote. they used to be the biggest in the world. Yeah, they were pretty huge. Okay, so watch it, watch yourself. You gotta put some over here, huh? Okay. So I'm not gonna keep video with this, guys. You know how we do. We put uh, our browns and then paper, uh, stalks, ochre stalks, anything that's living. And then we add uh, layers of uh, reclaimed potting soil. Okay. Guys, I was really worried about this Chichuro Asian pear, but it finally started leafing out. I thought I had lost this one with all the others that I lost in the deep freeze. So I'm very happy. Very, very happy. And here are the surviving sunflowers along with uh, morning glories. I have to plant these. I'll probably put them in the ground or in a big pot. But they're doing okay. I'm going to have Brian to water them. We just scoop out a little water in that rain barrel and just water these that are real dry. Just these three right here. Okay? Go ahead, Brian. Brian and I want to thank you for watching our video. We did a lot of work this week. Brian just came over today on Saturday, but I worked uh, the rest of the week by myself. And I'm telling you, it is a lot of work trying to have a garden, greenhouse, and food pours. But I thoroughly enjoy it. I want you to know that we appreciate you. Take your time out of your schedule to drop in and visit us to see what we're doing. You know that we love you and God loves you too. Thank you for watching. Bye now.